the departure of Eve from Adam's body left a void, which God filled with desire for her. Welcome to the podcast, Jesus in Sufism, Exploring Mystical Perspectives. I'm Jane, and today we're diving into the fascinating realm of Sufism and its unique relationship with Jesus Christ. Muslims, in general, hold a belief in all prophets, including Christ, but within Sufism, there is a special closeness to Jesus that sets him apart. So, why do Muslim Sufis approach Christ in such a profound way? To shed light on this topic, let's start with the understanding that Sufis interpret the texts of the Quran in a manner that differs from traditional Sunni interpretations. They move away from a literal understanding and delve into the deeper meanings and symbolism present in the scripture. One particular verse from Surat An-Nisa stands out. The Messiah, Jesus, son of Mary, was only a messenger of God, and his word which he bestowed upon Mary, and a spirit proceeding from him. In Sufi interpretation, the phrase, a spirit from him, implies that Jesus possessed the power to restore life to those who come into contact with this spirit, which represents the divine power of granting life itself. Renowned Sufi thinkers, such as Abu al-Qasim al-Kushairi and Abd al-Razik al-Kashani, have expanded upon esoteric interpretations surrounding Jesus. They explored concepts such as the transcendent nature of Jesus, the crucifixion, and the miracles attributed to him. Al-Kashani, in particular, drew heavily upon theosophical systems to formulate his interpretations revolving around Christ, with special emphasis on Mary's pregnancy. One aspect that draws Muslim Sufis to Jesus is his embodiment of asceticism and renunciation of worldly attachments. Sufis tend to embrace asceticism and austerity, and Jesus serves as an influential figure in this regard. He is seen as an example of someone who completely renounced the world, dedicating his life solely to God. This resonates deeply with Sufi practitioners. A notable figure within Sufism, Ibn Arabi, embarked on a spiritual journey that traversed different spiritual stations, or makams. Along this path, he encountered the influence of various prophets, including Jesus. Ibn Arabi recounts that he repented at the hands of Christ, who guided and met him frequently, instructing him in the ways of asceticism and detachment. Ibn Arabi also highlights the importance of ascetic practices by referring to Jesus wearing a patched cloak of wool. Sufis, too, adopt the practice of wearing patched clothing as a form of rigorous asceticism. Furthermore, there is a well-known story narrated by prominent Sufi thinkers like Abu Hamid al-Ghazali and Farid al-Din al-Attar. It describes Jesus using a rock as a pillow and challenging Satan's temptations by saying, I see that you still desire something in the world. Take it along with the rest of the world. This story exemplifies the depth of Jesus' asceticism and his rejection of worldly desires. Another fascinating aspect is the syncretic approach that Sufi thinkers take when addressing areas of disagreement between Christians and Muslims. This allows them to understand the concept of the Son of God through the lens of the Sufi concept of the unity of existence. By doing so, they bridge the gap and find common ground between the two faiths, as explained by Mahmoud Mustafa Ayyub in his work, Jesus the Son of God, a study of the terms Ibn and Walad in the Quran and Tafsir tradition. Ibn Arabi's unique perspective on Jesus differentiates him from traditional Islamic interpretations. Ibn Arabi, a scholar of the mystical traditions, provides us with a comprehensive perspective on the creation of human bodies. He invites us to contemplate the diversity of forms in which humanity arises. Although our physical bodies share similarities in terms of limits, reality, sensory form, and meaning, their modes of creation differ. Ibn Arabi presents an intriguing analogy that helps us grasp this concept. Imagine a potter, skillfully crafting vessels from clay, each unique in shape and purpose. Similarly, God, in his infinite knowledge, created human bodies in various forms, affirming causality while preventing causes from claiming agency. 
Ibn Arabi classifies human bodies into four types, shedding light on their creation. Let's embark on this fascinating journey of understanding. The first type of human body is that of Adam, fashioned from clay, without the union of a male and female. Ibn Arabi draws our attention to the resemblance between this act of creation and the skillful artistry of a potter molding clay into a vessel. Moving forward, we encounter the body of Eve, emerging from a male, created from Adam's rib. Ibn Arabi draws a parallel between this act of creation and a carpenter carving wood, fashioning a form from the material at hand. The departure of Eve from Adam's body left a void, which God filled with desire for her, maintaining the equilibrium of the universe. As the story unfolds, we witness the creation of the bodies of Adam and Eve's descendants, the third type. These bodies are formed through the union of a male and female, where the male seed enters the female womb. God takes charge of this process, nurturing and shaping the body within the womb, stage after stage. Finally, he breathes the human soul into it, completing the creation. But now, let's explore the fourth type, the body of Jesus, which holds its own uniqueness. While it shares similarities with the previous three types, it also differs in significant aspects. Like Adam, Jesus' body was created without a father, and like Eve, it appeared from a single human origin. In terms of formation in the womb and birth, it mirrors the descendants of Adam. However, what sets the body of Jesus apart is a remarkable distinction revealed by Ibn Arabi. He states that the settlement of his body and its human form was included in the blowing of the soul. Unlike the other bodies, which were perfected before the soul's entry, Jesus' body and soul were intertwined from the very moment of creation. This powerful insight opens up a realm of possibilities that deepen our appreciation for the uniqueness of this remarkable individual. And through contemplating Ibn Arabi's point of view, we may consider how body and soul relate in sequence, thus highlighting Jesus' unique existence. Jesus can enjoy the inherent characteristics of a spirit itself, as he is an embodied one according to Ibn Arabi, and these characteristics are anchored in an inseparable relationship between life and the human spirit. Life flowing from a touch or entrance by the spirit infuses and penetrates whatever is being affected, and this understanding of the spirit is supported by the Quran's statement about the power of the spirit to give life. According to Ibn Arabi, Jesus being a divine spirit himself, he was able, with the permission of God, to revive people from death by breathing life into them. These extraordinary powers demonstrated by Jesus are rooted in the powers of the spirit, an ability bestowed upon him by God. This sheds light on Jesus' uniqueness and sets him apart. Ibn Arabi's contribution to our understanding of Jesus distinguishes between spirituality and divinity, emphasizing that Jesus' abilities are a manifestation of his spiritual essence rather than a claim to divinity. The power to resurrect the dead, although remarkable, is a spiritual attribute rather than a divine one. Those who possess this ability share in the qualities of the spirit, not the inherent qualities of divinity. To better comprehend this concept, let's consider the analogy Ibn Arabi offers. Just as God has granted fire the ability to burn and has established causalities in worldly events with his permission, he has also bestowed upon the Spirit the ability to give life. Jesus, being the Spirit of God, signifies that life appears through him by the breath of God. As we near the end of our enlightening journey, Ibn Arabi's teachings also shed light on the special place held by the Muslim followers of Jesus, known as the Isawis, they are the second-generation inheritors of Jesus' essence from the Mohammedan reality. These spiritual heirs of Jesus exhibit their authority in various ways, evident to the general public. Some signs of an Asawi saint's authority include accepting prayers, showing mercy to the world, the ability to heal through touch, embrace or clothing, eloquence in speech, and profound knowledge of natural dispositions and their harmony. These characteristics further exemplify the influence and legacy of Jesus within the Asawi community. As we conclude this enlightening episode, 
We hope that our exploration of Ibn Arabi's insights has deepened your understanding of Sufism and Ibn Arabi's teachings and perspective on the uniqueness of Jesus' spiritual essence. Thank you for joining us on this mystical journey, and stay tuned for more episodes where we unravel the mysteries of the spiritual realm and explore the wisdom of great thinkers.